combo, everybody. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my top five favorite money saving tips, tricks, hacks for your Walt Disney World vacation. So tip number one is saving money on your tickets. So what I like to do is I go to mousesavers.com and they have a monthly newsletter not sponsored. I just like the newsletter and this is literally what I do. <laughs> so I sign up for the monthly newsletter and when it arrives to my email inbox, I click a link right inside there to Undercover Tourist. It's a website that is a third party ticket broker and they get their tickets from Disney. They are legit. They are unused. I mean, they're actual real Disney tickets and the combination of the Mouse Savers newsletter plus that Undercover Tourist link gets you the best prices on Walt Disney World tickets. And trust me, I have price compared. I have looked all the places and this is the best deal if you're going for multi-day tickets. I've used them multiple times. They always arrive to my door, new, unused. They link to my magic band wonderfully. It's just easy and you save tax and shipping. So it actually can save you 30 to $50 off of your tickets, which is awesome. That's a really good savings. Number two, saving money on your hotel room. So I have a video all about renting Disney Vacation Club points. I will link it up whatever corner it is for the cards. Um, and I'll link it in the description bar below too. So what we like to do when we go to Disney and we want to stay on site is we rent Disney Vacation Club points. So what Disney Vacation Club is, it's basically a timeshare where owners own at certain Disney resorts that are always really upscale, really, really nice, attached to either a park or the Disney Springs shopping area. And these are rooms that have lots of space. Some of them even have kitchens and washer and dryer and all sorts of things. So these hotel rooms, if you book them through Disney directly, are incredibly expensive, like $350 up. To like thousands of dollars, okay? When you rent Disney Vacation Club points, you can get these rooms around 50% off. It's crazy. So we have stayed three different trips at Disney's Boardwalk, which is the backside of Epcot and a hop, skip and a jump to Hollywood Studios. We've stayed at um, Saratoga Springs and Old Key West, which are both attached to the Disney Springs shopping area. In all instances, we saved so much money. So just for as an example, um, at the boardwalk, the lowest price I've ever been able to book a boardwalk villa DVC room going through my whole process that I linked in the cards of how to rent the points, it was around $120 a night. That's pretty good, right? Especially for such a huge hotel room right up on the backside of Epcot. The experience is so Good. So I highly recommend taking a look at that video uh, because it will answer all your questions about renting at Disney Vacation Club points. It is seriously my jam. I love doing it. And um, it's just, it makes for a really good vacation. Another alternative, if this is not your first time staying at Disney, I recommend taking a look at an off-site vacation rental. If it's your first one or two or three trips to Disney, I would opt for renting Disney Vacation Club points and staying on site because I find it makes for a better trip experience. But if you're a Disney veteran like myself, staying off site can be a great alternative for you. And there are tons and tons of really good off-site vacation rentals. We have stayed um, in an Airbnb before north of the Magic Kingdom. It was great. It was wonderful townhouse, really clean. Uh, really nice. This upcoming trip, we're staying in a vacation rental by owner, VRBO, similar to Airbnb. It's all pretty much the same type of concept. And um, we are getting an entire apartment type of style place for very, very inexpensive, under $100 a night. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. I think it's going to be a really good experience because it is close to the parks as well. And you get a little bit more space to spread out. Um, there are a few disadvantages of that. You don't get extra magic hours if that's a thing. You do have to leave property. So you kind of leave the magic behind. Um, but you can get some really good cost savings in there. And like I said, if it's not your first trip, it might be something good to explore. Number three saving money on your food at Disney or snacks or souvenirs or basically anything that you would want to buy at Disney. So what I like to do is I actually go to my local grocery store and I did the math in my head ahead of time and I know how much roughly I'm going to be spending while I am down at 
Disney. And what I do is I buy Disney gift cards from the grocery. So what that does is I do a little bit each month at a time. And so it spreads out the cost of the trip, spreads out the spending. So it's not just this big, huge credit card bill at the end of my trip. And I'm like, Ugh. Um, so I kind of know I have it all budgeted out. But also my local grocery store has a gas station attached to it. So I get money off of my gasoline. I'm going to fill up my car anyway. Buying gift cards from my grocery gives me gas points, bingo bango, I'm getting free gasoline in my car. So it's kind of like an extra bit of savings, something that you're going to be buying anyway. I'm going to be buying gasoline anyway. I might as well save money on it. And it spreads out the cost of my Disney trip. And Disney is really good about accepting gift cards. So you can um, pay basically just like cash using your gift card at the Disney owned restaurants, at the um, snack locations, at the souvenir shops, at the hotel. Hell, I mean, basically anything that's Disney, they accept a gift card for it. So really, really good, especially this time of year, too. If you're going anytime soon, Disney's Food and Wine Festival, you just go around with your gift card. You got it all covered. Number four, souvenirs. So souvenirs can be pretty pricey if you buy things in the park. So there are a couple of things that you can do to um, actually save some money on your souvenirs. If you have kids, bring souvenirs down in your suitcase. They won't have any idea that you didn't buy it from the Disney uh, gift shops. Um, you can get souvenirs up here at home, go to your Dollar Tree, go to your Walmart. Um, they have Disney things everywhere. So you can just pack them in your suitcase and you're gonna save a bundle over buying them actually at the parks. If you don't wanna buy them up here and cart them down in your suitcase, you can actually go off site the local Walgreens down there tons of Disney merchandise, like ridiculous. Also the Kissimmee Walmart has a lot and the Target, the Super Target that's down there. Tons of Disney things, all right? Disney licensed merchandise, not necessarily stuff you would find actually in the park, but if they're just looking for like a Disney Mickey plush or something, you can definitely find them even at the local Walgreens. If you want park specific merchandise at a discount, check out the Disney character warehouse. If you follow the Tim Tracker or if you follow Resort TV One, those are two YouTube channels that go to the Disney character warehouse quite often and show the new merchandise, I would say maybe once every week, once every two weeks, something like that. They're always showing the new merchandise. And this is park merchandise, stuff that you would get from Disney World, Disneyland, Tokyo Disney, all the different parks. It kind of ends up here. Maybe they're trying to turn merchandise out that's like a seasons that's past. Like maybe you'll find something from the Epcot Flower and Garden Festival at the Character Warehouse. There's two locations right near Disney. You can just Google that up and find those. But that would be a great place to go and check out if you want park specific merchandise at a killer discount. Tip number five, at Disney World, time is money, okay? Any time not spent having a good time, right? Either in a park or exploring the resort or just hanging out at Disney Springs is a time that's probably money wasted. So you want to help keep yourself and your family feeling their best. So I recommend always bringing with you necessities from home, okay? Blister block band-aids. If you get a blister on your foot day one when you've been walking around Magic Kingdom and you've got seven more days to go walking on that blister, no good. So bring along good comfort care items. Secondly, I bring my essential oils with me because I know if I got something going on, I can just grab an oil and it can take care of whatever that is. So I always have my tools in my toolbox. I don't bring this many. I bring just enough to put in a little pouch. Um, but it's, I'm so happy that I have my oils with me in the park. If I'm like super hot or I'm just not feeling great or if I need something to calm me down. I mean, I just grab my oils, put them on, and I am good to go to explore the rest of the park. Time is money. Also, bringing snacks with you, things you're used to at home having, it's gonna save you money of like buying a water at Disney's like $3 now. So bring your own water, bring it with you in your park bag. It's gonna save you tons of money. Bring um, snacks that your kids are used to having at home. Having really, really heavy park food or things that they're not used to can sometimes cause tummy upset. So I mean, this is where your essential oils come in, but this is a good thing to kind of keep in mind that you want to help keep your family feeling their best and eating things that they are 
kind of used to. Just keep them going strong throughout the day. Also, bringing a really good sunscreen with you, bringing something that can help you cool down like peppermint essential oil or a washcloth in some ice water, bringing that with you. Whatever it is that your family needs to stay comfortable, you're gonna be better off. I actually have a class coming up on Facebook Thursday at 7 p.m. There will be a replay link if you're watching this video after that. It'll be linked in the description bar below all about how to feel your best when you're at Disney. I would love to see you in that class because this is my world. Here's a bonus tip for you. So my bonus tip is take advantage of free things to do at Disney. So it, you don't have to spend money to have a really good time at Disney. The resorts are all open with free activities for you to do. They always have movies showing at either the pool or like open lawn space area. Taking a walk around the resorts and just checking out the lobbies, it's super duper fun. Actually, when we come down next month, we're actually making it a point to go around the lobbies and sniff them so that I can recreate lobby scents using my essential oils and my diffuser. I'm so excited about it. I'm like, like, you know, if you're a Disney person and you've been to Disney a couple of times, you know what I'm talking about with the Disney smells takes you right back. So pretty excited about that. Um, other things that you can get, they actually have I'm celebrating buttons, uh, whatever it is that you're down to Disney to celebrate. So a birthday, anniversary, wedding, whatever it is, you can ask a cast member and they can direct you to where to get those buttons. You get them for completely free. And then it's so nice to wear them because cast members will recognize you and say, oh, happy birthday or, you know, whatever you have going on. Um, it's just a nice little fun souvenir to take home 100% free. Fort Wilderness is another great place to go for some free activities. They have a little horse barn. You can see horses. Um, you can walk the different trails at Fort Wilderness, which is really nice. They actually have a playground there as well. Um, and you can ride around the boat launches. It's just super duper fun. There's lots of things to do there. And I personally just love riding Disney transportation. I love riding the boats. I love riding the monorails and like all those things. I just think it's super duper fun. And and that's free stuff to do too. All right, guys, those are my top tips for saving money at Disney World. I hope this was helpful for you. If you haven't already and you'd like to, hit that button down below, subscribe, so you never miss a daily video. Happy Disney saving. I'll see you all tomorrow. Ciao.